Hi everybody, uh, I'm gonna talk about a research paper that I co-authored with Matti Ylonen, who's there in the audience, and uh, our title or topic was How Legal Scholars Facilitate Tax Avoidance. Ooh. It's uh, wrong. <laughs> Okay, so minor technical problem. So, uh, slides, yeah, different versions of slides, but yeah, this will do well. So, uh, how can legal scholars or legal scholarship uh, uh, affect, affect any court interpretation? That is like, that is the major question we're dealing with. Uh, and the, the basis for this is simply that, that uh, when tax law courts, when they interpret the law, they use articles, tax law textbooks, and monographs. Monograph is written by tax law scholars. So in our, in our article, we are studying, studying uh, that, that uh, how can the tax advisory business influence the court decisions through, through this legal scholarship. And, and the tax advisory companies have a great incentive uh, in, in influencing the, the, in influencing the uh, tax law adjudication because their product is that they uh, that they sell to their customers is they try to minimize their customers taxes okay, <laughs> okay. yeah that's better so and, uh, and our case study takes place in Finland, and what, what is the tax law field in Finland like? Well, uh, it is dominated by the big four companies, and they have about 80% market share of the tax law adjudication process. And, and in our case study, we are interested about the uh, uh, innovation of a new tax avoidance scheme. And, and, and and the uh, specifics of the scheme were, uh, were the, the basic idea there was that uh, in, in Finnish uh, tax system, there's a really big difference if you manage to get your income qualified as a capital income uh, instead of a salary income. So it's uh, taxed much more lighter to get your income qualified as a capital income. So in our, in our uh, new avoidance scheme, uh, the idea was that there were some executives of uh, big Finnish listed companies. Uh, and by using this scheme, uh, they tried to get their compensation from their company to get converted into a capital income. And it would have been even completely tax-free. Uh, to 90,000 euros, uh, but when the tax avoidance scheme was innovated, uh, there was a legal risk involved that the court could qualify this new scheme as an avoidance, and therefore all the tax advantages uh, wouldn't have been received. And, and in our paper, we, we followed up that what happened after the invention of the scheme and especially what were the legal scholars and different actors and institutors doing before the uh, court decision. And, and there was uh, very much scholarly efforts before the president was given. Uh, and for example, there was a keynote speech given in a major Finnish tax law conference, and there was even two uh, law reviews articles published about these new, new avoidance schemes. And there was even a, an opinion editorial column by a, by a Finnish law professor written in a, in a leading Finnish newspaper. And in all of these scholarly articles and speeches and comments, they had normative prescriptions, and they all said that uh, 
these new avoidance schemes should be accepted. Uh, they should be decided to be, uh, they should be taxed as a, as a salary, no, as a capital gain instead of a salary. And, and many of these actors, the legal scholars and lawyers, were directly involved in the case. And, and the first, first uh, administrative instance that decided on a case gave a favorable, favorable, favorable legal interpretation uh, for these uh, new avoidance schemes and their users. Uh, but nevertheless, there was a uh, tax agency representative uh, who filed an appeal after the first instance decision. And again, uh, what was interesting here was perhaps not the details of the court decision, but we followed up that how did the legal scholars and legal scholarship react to this new court decision that was unfavorable to the advisory industry and the people using those schemes. Uh, so the majority of legal scholarship and legal articles written about that case were very critical of the court decision. So even, even some of the legal scholars wrote there that, uh, that it was plain wrong and illegal, perhaps even, the court decision. And they also said that it's going to scare the companies out of Finland and ruin the Finnish economy and so on. And there was also several efforts by different legal scholars uh, to downplay the meaning of this new precedent so that it wouldn't be representative as some judicial doctrine. So they wouldn't, the judges, so they wouldn't make the mistake again. And, and again, uh, all the critical Scholar, scholars, all the lawyers and scholars who were critical of the case had ties to the tax advisory industry. And there were a few so-called independent scholars who also wrote articles about this case, but they merely had a descriptive take, so they didn't say that it's a bad or good decision. So, And uh, perhaps what do we want to say with our case study is that uh, when we think of legal interpretation and tax avoidance and how do courts make some decision, we should look at the different actors and legal scholars, like how they're trying to contribute and, and uh, influence the court decisions. And I think the Finnish legal scholarship is, is not that different to, to what it is in many other jurisdictions in Europe and North America too, so similar case studies. Could and should be done in other jurisdictions as well. Thank you.